Hello again. Okay, so today I am going to work on this muslin. It is Wednesday and actually tomorrow I decided to make a last minute trip home. So tomorrow I'm gonna fly home and see my family and spend some time with them for a few days. And so basically today is the day that I have to get this muslin done. Muslins usually don't take that long or they shouldn't take that long, like the individual muslins. Sometimes the fitting process can take a little bit longer. The purpose of a muslin is to get the most basic information of the pattern onto your body to assess any fit issues. So it doesn't have to be pretty, you know, you don't have to make it out of a muslin fabric. You can make it out of any fabric that you want. So I usually just use this cotton muslin material, but if I have some leftover material from another project that I don't really care about, you know, using and abusing, I'll use that too. So it doesn't have to be that muslin fabric. I'm going to cut out all the pieces, sew it together really quickly. I'm just doing the shell, so I'm not doing anything for the lining yet. I just need to get the basic fit information. I'm also not going to cut it to the full length yet. I'm just going to kind of do it the kind of hip length that the original jacket was. Although it might actually be good to do it full length just to see how long I want to make this thing. So maybe actually I take that back. Maybe I actually will do it the length that I think I want to do it. And I will give you a little update once I get it all sewn together. I also had a couple of questions in the last video about how I drafted the sleeve for this jacket. So all I did was make sure that the sleeve was nice and flat in the folded position. I even put some pins in just to make sure that it stayed flat. First, I traced around using the pin method that I showed you guys in the last video. I just kind of marked points along the top of the sleeve cap here. The shoulder seam is right here, so I made like a little kind of tick mark here where that matched up on the sleeve. And I did the same thing where it matched up here with this little princess seam line. And then also this is a two piece sleeve. So it has a strip on the bottom side here that I wanted to make a note of. And the reasoning for a two piece sleeve is so that the sleeve has a little bit of a curvature to it. You can kind of add some shaping to the sleeve and it's not super noticeable. And then it just works a little bit better for jackets and outerwear to have a curved sleeve like that. So I knew I was gonna have to kind of do a little bit of guesswork at first and then kind of work my way backwards to that curved sleeve. So I made sure to note like right here, which you probably can't hardly see it because the lighting in here is so bad today. Right here is where that underside, the undersleeve is attached. And then on the back side, it goes over to here. So while I was tracing this, I was just kind of making little, I guess, notes with my pen at those locations. Then I flipped the sleeve over, did the same thing and ended up with basically two sleeve halves. Okay, so I'll try to show you the paper that I originally started with, even though I've already kind of hacked it up a little bit. But basically once I did, you know, each half of the sleeve, I had this piece here. So it's this here for the front half of the sleeve. And then this represents the part of the undersleeve that I could trace here, okay? Then I flipped it over and did the same thing for the back. So again, I have this piece here and then this represents the undersleeve on the back portion of the sleeve and I drafted these right next to each other. I could meet them up at the edge here on the bottom and then it kind of started to curve so you can kind of see where that curve is coming into the sleeve. So I basically need to resolve this dart into the undersleeve, okay? So what I did was I cut off the undersleeve on each side leaving this center portion here as the main upper part of the sleeve. Then I cut a slit here to the middle and pivoted this dart so that the sleeve cap would be closed at the top here, okay? So I've got that taped here. Now you can see the top of the sleeve cap, but now we have a dart here, which actually is okay that this is not closed. It just gives me a little bit more ease at the elbow here. So now I need to basically give myself the same length in the undersleeve. So the next thing that I did was I wanna make sure that, it, that the undersleeve matches up here and I'm not making any changes to this side of the sleeve, but I need to make sure that on this side it matches up. So then <laughs> I connected the undersleeve so basically just connected these two pieces. This is the outside of where I trace these pieces. Now they are together um, so that this edge will match up with here and then this edge will eventually match up over here. So once I got these taped together, I cut a slit here to make another pivot point here at the edge and just open this up the same amount that I opened that. And then I basically trued that curve on both this side of the sleeve and on the undersleeve so that now those would match up. And then I just retraced those sleeve pieces onto new paper. So here's what the undersleeve looks like now. It's got a, a subtle curve here and here, okay? And then here's what the upper sleeve looks like. Of course, I just went through and made sure to walk the seams to make sure that that would fit. So this piece will go here and then it'll also connect on the other side of the sleeve here in the front. And hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any more questions about how 
I drafted that if you need any kind of clarification, just let me know in the comments below. I also wanna make a note that I, you know, here you can see where I made marks that indicate where it matches up with the sleeve seam and where it matches up with the princess seam. And I wanted to make sure that I marked all of that on the sleeves and I, you know, carried that over to the final pattern piece as well. But I think that'll definitely get me started. This particular muslin is 118 inches wide and it was, I think, $12.99 a yard, 100% cotton. And this is what I use whenever I make muslins, unless I have another fabric on hand that I don't mind using for a muslin. But typically I'll just use this kind of 100% cotton. It's almost like a quilting weight cotton and it's just like an off-white color. And I like to get the wide, 118 inch wide version of the muslin just because I feel like I can get more bang for my buck with that. So um, they do come in many different widths, but I typically try to go for the really wide, wide version. This is what I'll be using to make the muslin for the trench coat. Okay, so I've got the coat shell put together without the sleeves and I'm pretty happy with the direction this is going. I think there are a couple of things that I want to alter. So one thing to note about the original jacket, it was a little tight across the bust in the back and I think it's because I need a full bust adjustment and um, I'll show you that one in just a second. But basically I marked kind of the, where I guesstimated that the bust points were and they're like really close in. Or mine are kind of like here. So we've got about, I don't know, a little over an inch between where mine are and where the bust points are on this jacket. So I think a little full bust adjustment might be good. Um, also, this is gonna be double breasted. So if I can get this in here with one hand, basically I think the fit through the waist and hips is probably good. I did add 13 inches to the bottom. I think that's about right actually, cause I'm gonna hem it up. I'll probably do a wide hem on the bottom and it'll be about knee length, which I like. I went ahead and pressed under the seam allowance at the lapels and the, the front where it buttons. One thing I think I might do is actually widen the lapels a little bit. I feel like I want the lapels to be a little bit more dramatic. So I might just kind of extend the collar and the lapels out maybe about an inch. And I don't know, see how that goes. I may need to do another muslin to see if I like those changes, but that's kind of where, I'm, where my mind is at right now. I'm gonna add the sleeves on here and try this on again and see if that changes anything. But so far, I feel like the fit is pretty close. Oh, another thing I really like in the back here, I don't know if you can see, there's a seam at the back waist and I wanna extend that detail to the front. So I may make it kind of like, kind of bisect it here so that it's two separate pieces for the upper bodice and the lower portion of the jacket. I feel pretty good about this draft that I copied from a jacket that I already owned, so yeah. Okay, so here is the coat with the sleeves on. I think this is pretty good. I do have a little bit of a forward shoulder. I might work on that, but it's not really, enough, I think, for me to make any major adjustments to the pattern. Also, the fabric that I'm gonna be using is actually a twill with a little bit of stretch in it. So I think it'll be perfectly fine, actually. So I, I don't really feel like that's a huge priority for me at this moment. So I think full bust adjustment, I'm going to widen the lapels a little bit and then I'm gonna bisect the front bodice so that it aligns with the back bodice there. I just think that'll be kind of nice to carry that through to the front. And also I was thinking that this pattern would be really cute as like a little cropped kind of faux 
suede jacket too so that may be something later down the road that I could do. I think the sleeve is pretty good. The curve in the sleeve is very subtle but you can see that I don't have any drag lines along the sleeve there when my arm is just kind of resting naturally by my side. So that's kind of what that curve in the sleeve does for a jacket. Another thing I wanted to note when you are trying on a sleeve for a muslin you want to make sure that you clip into the curves at the bottom of the arm side, especially with like a 5 8 inch seam allowance, just seam allowance, which is what I'm doing on this jacket. That extra width basically makes the armhole smaller because the edge, you know, of that circle is obviously smaller than where the seam allowance would be. If you're ever fitting a muslin and you're like, God, the sleeve just feels so constricting, you probably just need to, to kind of release that curve and, and give that arm side a little bit more flexibility. So anyway, just FYI. Okay, I think I'm going to start packing for my trip. And just as a reminder, this is how the original jacket fits. And then here you can see, I actually ended up bringing in this these top buttons here. They were originally kind of further out here because this is a little tight across the bust. I just love this jacket. I think it's such a cute little jacket. And I'm pretty happy with the trace that I did besides those minor adjustments that I wanna to do to make it fit just a little bit better. Okay, before I wrap up today's video, <laughs> Um, I thought I could answer a few questions. I had a few questions that came up on last week's video and I thought, hey, I'll just do a quick little Q&A here to answer a few of these questions. So I wrote them down or I typed them down on my phone, my notepad. A couple of these were on last week's video, but then it also made me think of a couple of others that people sometimes ask. Maybe it's just a good practice to occasionally do little Q&As and answer some of the questions that come up more frequently. First, I got a few questions about how I drafted the sleeve when I traced the jacket pattern last week, which I showed you in the beginning of this video. So hopefully that cleared up some things. And if you still have questions about that, feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know. The second question that I got, several people asked this question actually, and I thought I could clarify. Several people wanted to know why I have pennies on my drafting ruler. So I will share that with you now. You can see here, I've got pennies taped in a few spots on both sides of my French curve here. And the reason for this is because it lifts my ruler off of the paper just a little bit so that when I'm drafting with my Sharpie, especially like with a marker that tends to, you know, smudge, it just keeps the ruler from smudging through the marker lines and the pen lines and smudging them across the paper. I actually learned this little trick in architecture school when we were learning how to draft architectural plans, you know, by hand before we were doing things on the computer. And it really does help. It helps kind of lift everything up and keeps your edge of your ruler from kind of dragging all your lines across the paper. That brings me to my next question. What is your day job? So this right here is actually my day job. Like I said, you know, I started my career as an architect. Back in 2011, I actually started, I started just making art and selling it online. And then that kind of evolved into making art for textiles. So I was doing like surface pattern design for fabrics. And I actually have some classes over on Skillshare about how I do used to do that, if you're interested in that. And then eventually I started doing little handmade home goods and accessories. And then I eventually grew that into a small wholesale business. I was selling my products to little shops and boutiques all over the US and got really burned out. I was just like mass producing items for wholesale basically. And it was a lot. And I actually had some help. I had a couple of seamstresses that helped me out. But then when we moved to Michigan, I kind of just was like, you know, I think I want to, I think I want a fresh start and kind of switch things up a little bit. So yeah, I started sewing my own clothing just as a hobby at first, just for fun. Saw how vibrant the online sewing community was, started designing sewing patterns. And now I sell sewing patterns. That's kind of the majority of my income comes from selling sewing patterns. And then I have this YouTube channel, which has been um, a newer source of income for me. But yeah, I do this full time. I feel very lucky to be able to do this. It's amazing. I love what I do every day. It's taken me a long time to get to this point, but it's definitely been worth it. And yeah, I do this full time now. Thank you for being here and for supporting me. It's amazing. So another question that I get all the time is where did I get my ironing pad? And I got it at Hobby Lobby and I have looked everywhere online for something very similar. Hobby Lobby is the only place that I have been able to find it. I don't, I, I guess you can order it online. I actually got this one in person. I was, wow, that sun just got really bright. Hang on a sec. And Hobby Lobby is the only place that I have found it. It has been the best little ironing pad ever. I use this ironing pad all the time. It's, it's amazing. And actually, I think it'd be really easy to make something like this. Uh, I thought about doing like a little tutorial and kind of figuring out how it's made and like showing you guys how to make it because it's, it's pretty simple, but it's just really handy to have it and pull it out really quick, unfold it, iron something, and then put it away. Love it. I don't even use my regular ironing board anymore now that I have this. 
And another question that I get quite often is where and how do I shop for fabric? So I shop mostly online and at my local Joanne fabric store. I know that not everybody has one of those. So I definitely recommend checking out a lot of, on there's, there's so much fabric online. There's so much, it's a lot to sift through, I, I know. And I actually did a video on this several videos back. I'll put a link to that in the cards up here and down in the description if you wanna go check that out. But I kinda just go over, you know, all the different ways that I like to shop for fabric. Whenever I'm not sure about fabrics that I'm ordering online, I do try to order samples when I can, if I'm not in too much of a hurry. It helps make that decision-making process a little easier. So it really is is just you know a process of like learning more about fabric and over time it gets a little easier i know when you're first starting out with sewing your own clothing it can be like super overwhelming to try to find fabric online it just takes practice and familiarizing yourself with the types of fabrics that your favorite garments are made out of like the store-bought ready-to-wear garments that you have and then you can just kind of google search for different types of fabric depending on the fabric content so anyway, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about how I shop for fabric, yeah, check out that video. I talk a lot more about that in that video. And one more question that I get quite a lot, actually, I've had people reach out to me via email about this several times, is what is the color of my walls, like the paint color of the walls in my sewing room? And the I'm sad to say I don't know what the paint color is. This room was painted this way when we moved in. And when we first moved in, I was like, oh gosh, I kind of wish the walls were white. But I have to be honest, I love this blue color. It's such a nice, soothing, calming color. And I feel like it really adds something special to the sewing room. So yeah, I love this color too. Unfortunately, I don't know what it is. I need to go to like Lowe's or Home Depot and just get a bunch of paint chips and see if I can figure out what the color of this room is. I'm sure there's like an app or something that you can use too to discover what the color of the room is. So if you guys know of anything like that, let me know in the comments below um, and I'll figure it out and let you guys know because it, it really is a nice color. It's like not too cool. It's very soothing and calming and I love working in this room. So except for when it gets really hot, like right now the sun's coming in, it's probably gonna get hot as blazes in here, but uh, yeah. I think that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, next week, I do hope to dig a little deeper on this coat design. I wanna make a few of the changes that I talked about earlier. I'll probably do another muslin and, oh, I also ordered fabric. So I ordered the coat fabric for the wool coat that I talked about last week. And I'm gonna keep that a secret until that fabric comes in. I'm very, very, very excited about it. I got a lot of feedback from you guys in the comments on which fabric you liked the best for that. So that was a lot of fun. I'm glad you guys were kind of sharing with me what you thought. I also ordered a lining fabric for this coat that I'm working on right now. I need to order a lining for the wool coat, but I kind of want to get the fabric in first and, and then decide which color I want to go for with the lining. So anyway, thank you guys for being here. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more from me, please be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Uh, okay, I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye!